Hey, good evening, everybody. It's good to be back with you tonight here on uh, online and uh, being able to bring you a midweek message. Thank you, <clears throat> first of all, for tuning in and being a part of our uh, uh, midweek message. And so we're thankful to do that and be and thankful to have you. So as we get into the Word of God tonight, what I'd like to do is just share some thoughts with you that I believe is going to help you regarding a subject that we talked about last week, and I want to add a few more thoughts to it uh, this evening that I believe will bring some encouragement to you and help you to get some understanding about how that God really sees us and the way that we should see God. So we talked a little bit about honor last week, so I want to kind of jump in right there again this evening. So... In 1 Samuel chapter 22, it's kind of where I want to start this evening, it shows us that God was very frustrated and, and to the place of dealing with Eli, the, the high priest. Eli was the high priest, and he, he was frustrated with Eli because Eli was not showing uh, uh, the Lord honor the way that he should. And so God begins to give him some uh, prophetic words about things that are going to happen. I believe God was trying to get Eli to, to make an about turn, but he refused to do it. And then it kind of comes to a head, it, it, you know, to a place to where there's, uh, God has to really get his attention. And let me start reading here with 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 29. He says, Wherefore, you kick at my sacrifices and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and you honor your sons above me to make yourself fat with the chief of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I, I said indeed that, my, that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Now, I want to just talk a little bit about this, about how uh, what honor looks like so he says here and i want you to notice that you know the bible tells us whatever a man sows that shall he reap uh, also reap oh honor is no different he's saying here those that honor me i will honor them those that despise me which tells me that that's the opposite of honor we think sometimes when we hear the word despise we get a different concept of, of what that means besides dishonor. But that's he's giving us one, one thing. Those that honor me, I will honor them. Those that despise me, which simply means those that won't show me honor, I won't show them honor or they will be lightly esteemed. They will be lightly thought of. And so that should give us an indication that God expects for his creation to show honor to him, and by us showing honor to him, he will show honor to us as well. And so we talked a little bit about, about these things uh, uh, the last week. So I want to jump in and start reading here uh, this evening with uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. In verse 22, he says, So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake, and when uh, and he went up from there unto Bethel, and as he was going on the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and they mocked him, and they said unto him, uh, Go up, uh, thou bald head, go up, bald head. In another translation, it says, They kept calling him baldy. And he turned back and looked at them and cursed them in the name of the Lord, and there came forth two she bears out of the woods, and they tear forty two children of them. So now I want you to get an indication here of what was going on. There is dishonor. And, and what I want you to see this evening is words create dishonor in, uh, to, to people. We say things sometimes. We say things about other people. We talk about other people uh, very loosely. We're easy to let stuff roll off our mouth. And we show dishonor to many people by the things that we let that come out of our mouth. The Bible says that... Um, you know, the, the, out of the heart, the, 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 out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when we start saying things, you know, about other people and showing dishonor them to them by the words that we speak, it is showing us that, um, 
we dishonor them by the words that we say, the things that we say about them. So we have to be very careful about the things that we say to other people because it creates a place of dishonor. And so he shows us that here. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, he even says, But I say unto you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So the things that we say actually do matter because what they ultimately do is they ultimately cause dishonor. And so when we dishonor people, we are not following after what it is that the Lord wants us to do. We show dishonor to them, and when we show dishonor to other people, in many instances, we also show dishonor to the Lord. And the Lord wants to cause honor to be given to us. But notice what he says, I will honor those who honor me. So we should be about trying to figure out how it is that we're going to show honor to the Lord. Folks, that's, that's the thing, is we need to be people that want to show the, uh, the honor, show honor to the Lord, because we know it comes also with a, the laws of sowing and reaping. If we show honor to the Lord, then he'll show honor back to us. And after all, when the Lord honors you, everything else begins to fall into place, right? And, and when we start showing people dishonor, we start saying things, we start uh, using uh, words against other people, that is not, we, we have to recognize that people are really what Jesus died for. Do you understand the Lord didn't come back for the planet to save the planet? In fact, uh, through the scriptures, it tells us that uh, essentially that planet Earth will not be saved ultimately. And uh, we think sometimes that we put more, more appreciation on the planet or on plants. And not that I'm against uh, taking care of the things that God has given us, obviously. But it can't mean more than people or animals. You know, we're, we have all these different things where we're trying to save the animals and save uh, endangered species, of which I'm certainly in favor of. And I love animals. I love the creation that God has created. But are they worth more than people? And so we show dishonor sometimes by the way that we treat people. And even when it comes to our children, folks, we should never say and, 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 and say things to the, our children and, and try to demean them or, or, you know, show them dishonor in that way. When you, when you say things negative about your children, what do you, you ultimately do is you, you, put, you plant thoughts of seed into their mind. They're, they're not worth much. There's no value to, to their life. And we, you know, we'll say sometimes, well, you, you're just an idiot. Or you, can, don't you know any better than that? You're, are you stupid? Are you dumb? I would be ashamed. You're just this, you're that. And what we're doing is we're degrading and we're de devaluing their self-worth. And folks, when we realize that our worth isn't worth much, then we don't think much about our honor when it comes to the, the things of God. So we have to recognize that we got to show value to the things of God. He says here in 2 Timothy, Paul was speaking to Timothy, and he says, Let no man despise your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. In Titus 2.15, he says, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. Now you can't, he wasn't saying go out and physically stop some, from someone from despising you. That wasn't what he meant. What he was saying was don't let them despise you in your eyes, in your perspective of yourself. When, when people say, well, what, you're so young and, and you want to be a minister or you're so young, why, you can't do this, you can't achieve that. You're just, after all, you're, you're somebody that, uh, you know, has so much more uh, uh, room to grow. You, you can't achieve anything. Well, what they're saying is now they're despising you, they're showing you less value, and he's saying don't let those things sink in. You have to recognize the value of yourself, of what God has done for you. And... Uh, there used to be this show, well, I guess it still is a show. Y'all ever watch Pawn uh, Stars? 
Um, you know, I, I I enjoy that show from time to time. I'd be flipping to the channels and see that, and I like to see some of the things that people pawn and what the values that, that they're worth. But on that particular show, there's two thoughts to that show that I want you to see. Is number one, I didn't ever like how that they kind of talk to each other. The, the father of the show, you know, I think he passed away not too long ago, but they used to you know, just call him old man, you know, or they'd call some of the other ones, you're just an idiot. And the way that they address each other was very demeaning. And it, and it takes away the value. It's like I don't value you as a, as a human being when I start calling you these things or even to call your father old man. I, I don't, I never really like that. And folks, that is not okay. It's not okay to, 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 to demean and degrade the people around you because if you see them that way, then it's hard for you to see God in the way that he needs to be seen as well. But also, watch this. The things that they brought in on that show you could it could be a painting for example it'd be a painting that if you looked at it you might look at that painting and say i wouldn't give you ten dollars for that painting because it just doesn't have any value to you but yet there are people that have paid millions of dollars for something that you wouldn't pay ten dollars for well how what is its value well to you it doesn't have any value because you're not willing to pay anything substantial for it. You have shown how that something is valuable or invaluable based on what you are willing to sacrifice for it. Now watch. If you're not even willing to put $10 for a painting, you're saying, I don't value that painting because I'm not going to sacrifice the monetary commitment that it would take to buy that. But yet, on the other hand, somebody else could pay a million dollars for that painting. What is its value to them? That same painting. They're saying that it is worth a substantial financial sacrifice because they perceive that, you know, for whatever reason, the painter, they, they admire the, the person that painted it, or it's, it's uh, very uh, scarce and, and there wasn't many of those type paintings. Whatever the reasoning is, they value it so much they're willing to pay for that. Well, this is what I want you to see. This is how much that Jesus valued you and how much God valued you that he was willing to pay the largest payment that could ever be paid for anything or anyone and that was the life of Jesus that's how God saw you as valuable and so he honored us he honored humanity by giving us the maximum the largest payment that could be paid and that payment was Jesus himself now what happens if God said well they I ain't willing to give them Jesus Let's give them, you know, uh, uh, let's, we'll throw an angel down. Maybe that'll help them. Or we'll sacrifice an animal or, or a dog or, or a, a cat or some other animal for them. Well, that, he would be showing you that you weren't worth a whole lot. But when he gave you his very best in the person of Jesus and sacrificed his life for us, he's showing us how valuable that we are in his sight. And folks, if we don't see ourselves the way that God sees us, then we won't show him honor as well. But when we realize how much that God honors us by, by seeing how much value he placed on us, then folks, it makes, makes it easy to say, God has honored me by showing me how much value that he, he has put into my life. And I want to show honor to him. And see, folks, your words... Are what determine that what you say about things and let me let me flip it around to this what you say about yourself matters and this is that's really where I wanted to dial in just for just a few more minutes what you say about yourself matters listen to this Proverbs 2 or 6 verse 2 says you are snared with the words of your mouth you're taken with the words of your mouth Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, he's saying this. He's saying what you say has a significance of importance as to how you are perceived and what you perceive. 
as valuable, important. And if you say negative things about yourself all the time, you say, well, I'm no good, I'm, I'm not worth anything, I can't, you know, I've never achieved anything, I, I don't even know if I'm saved, I, I, I've done too much, I've gone too far. People that talk like that do not understand the value of Jesus. They don't understand the significance of the sacrifice, and they don't understand the significance of the ability of the sacrifice to save them. If they believe that their sin is greater than God's sacrifice of Jesus, then really they, they're ultimately saying, my sin is greater than what Jesus can, could, could fix, could do. And folks, that just couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, is greater than anything that any sin that you've committed the blood of Jesus can fix anything any person doesn't matter how far you've gone it doesn't matter how far away from God you were it doesn't matter what you've done there's not one thing that the blood of Jesus cannot fix and then that, that that can't be changed so you have to understand decide what you're willing to see your worth if you see your worth as something great and I know that, that that's hard sometimes because people think that that's pride. Folks, that is not pride. It is a recognition of what Jesus and what God the Father has done for you. And listen, I understand that without Jesus, I can do nothing. But when somebody else begins to demean me and say that I'm not worth much and that I'm, I'm not going to amount to anything, you're not this, you're not that, in the kingdom of God, whatever, want to talk to me like that, I do not receive that assessment. I refuse to let those kind of words sink into my spirit and say that somehow or another that, I, that God didn't love me enough to, to pay the ultimate price for me and that he's created opportunities for me that are individual for me. Everybody's different, and God loves each and every one of us and has a specific individual call for everyone. But, folks, I don't receive people talking negatives over me. Now, it doesn't mean I can't be corrected, and it doesn't mean there isn't times that I need to hear some things that I need to judge myself on. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, put-downs, trying to squelch you and push you down. I refuse to receive those because Jesus paid the ultimate price for me, and he loved me. He thought I was valuable enough to save, just like he thought that you were valuable enough to save. And so if he's honored me, I am going to honor him with the things that I say over my life. I don't perceive my life to be worthless. I'm not worthless. I'm worth something. God is the one that established the value of my worth by the fact that he paid the price of Jesus for me. It'd be like this, folks. If you knew that your house was worth, let's just say, a half a million dollars, and somebody came in and they said, I love your house, and maybe you were trying to sell it for a half a million dollars, and somebody came in and said, I love your house, but I'm going to offer you $50,000. Would you take it? Well, of course you wouldn't. But yet, sometimes when people offer you their, their, what they believe your value is as a person, it's the equivalent of that same analogy. If you know you're worth a half a million, would you take $50,000 of worth to yourself? I sure hope not, because that would be majorly undervaluing the person that God has made you to be. And folks, this all comes back to just and not recognizing honor we 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 show honor to one another and we're supposed to show honor to one another by treating each other kindly and respectfully and and recognizing that uh, that our purpose in life is to help someone come to Jesus rather than just walk around and try to judge everybody and tell everybody what's wrong with their life that's why the Lord told us before we start and go out and judge everybody else and tell everybody else what to do, we have to make sure and judge ourselves before we begin to, to judge anybody else because once we judge ourselves, I believe that we'll find that we have enough things to deal with in our own life. But that doesn't mean that we're not worth it. We are worth it in the eyes of God. And that's why he told us in many different scriptures, he tells us, in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, he says, Being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness 
for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. He's talking about that we have been justified. God did it for us because He loved us. Romans 5, uh, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom also we have access by faith into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. He's telling us that Jesus did all of this for us. Now, this last scripture I want to read to you before we get ready to, to, to close out. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 says, I love this. He says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. That's talking to you folks. You aren't redeemed with something that is corruptible, and that just means something that can be tainted. He says, like silver or gold, from your vain conversations received by the tradition of your fathers, but you were, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He says, that was the value that God placed upon your life, the value of the blood of Jesus. And folks, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what anybody says, don't let yourself ever be convinced that you are not the person of value that God sees you to be. And when you see yourself as valuable, it'll be easy to honor God because you'll recognize the reason that you are valued the way that you are is because that's the way God sees you. And God will continue to honor us when we honor him. We just keep showing honor to the Lord. He'll keep showing honor to us. And your life will be a wonderful, wonderful life. Amen. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope you realize that uh, by the end of this, as you've watched this evening, that you're worth something. You are worth something. And we, as we honor the Lord, he'll continue to honor us. He's already honored us. He started out honoring Eli. But what happened? Eli got off the path and quit honoring God. And that's when God had to say, Eli, I, you know, I show honor to those who honor me. So when you quit honoring me, then you quit getting honored by me. And folks, we don't want to quit being honored by the Lord. We want to show honor to the Lord. He definitely, not only does he deserve it, but it is, it is the right thing. He, it is due him. We are, he is due our honor, not uh, just uh, to, to carry about on like a relationship like somehow or another that um, he isn't worth what we have to offer him. Everything we give to the Lord, he is worthy of. And then he turns around, and even though we're not worth the honor that he gives us, he still does it because that's the way he sees us as a something of value, so much so that he was willing to give us Jesus. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Hey, if, you, uh, if you're watching t this evening and you don't have a home church, we invite you to come out to Kingsway Church. We're up at, uh, on Providence Hill, and uh, we have service every Sunday morning at 1030. And it's always a wonderful time to get to know new people that are coming in. And if you don't, if you've never been a part of uh, a church or never been to Kingsway Church, I invite you to come out and just let us get to know you. We'd love to, to have you in our in-person services. And I believe that you'd enjoy being here, and there'd be many people that'll greet you and make you feel right at home. Amen. So. I hope that you understand tonight that God sees you as a valuable person and he has shown you honor. Now go ahead and go back and show him honor and let the things that are important to him be important to you. Amen. So I'm praying for you that until I get to be with you again on, on an online service or in person, I'm praying that God's very best will be yours. Amen.